Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Welcome to MC.TV. Now we're gonna take a step back from the JoJo references and the memes for now, but make sure you guys hit that like button, hit subscribe so that they will come back. But we're looking into rulings today, and ruling is serious business, and I want to make sure that none of you guys get screwed over because an improper play happened with the new cards in Chaos Impact. Now we're specifically looking into summon based rulings, we're looking into Gladiator Beast, we're looking into IP Masquerina, and we're also looking at the most frequent and most common misplayed summons that are happening in this competitive season so make sure that you guys hit thumbs up hit subscribe ding notification bell to be aware of all this stuff and more coming up but right now we'll just jump right into the gladiator beast cards okay so there's two cards that i want you guys to be aware of so that you guys don't get screwed over because uh people illegally summoned uh, various cards so we're looking at gladiator beast comeback and gladiator rejection both of those cards are being played improperly in the same fashion because they're being ignored in terms of what you're allowed to special summon so looking into gladiator beast comeback why this one really matters and we'll put it into the context of what's actually happening special summon one gladiator beast monster from your hand or graveyard with a different type from the monsters you control that is a key line right there and it cannot be destroyed by battle okay let's break down the effect part by part uh, first of all not once per turn whatsoever it doesn't have any sort of limitation when it comes to the amount you can activate the second thing is that the monster that cannot be destroyed by battle that part of the effect is applied to the monster so if you have any applied effect onto it even if your monster's effect is negated this monster cannot be destroyed by battle because of the effect of comeback, not because of their own effect. So that was one thing that kind of came up to uh, some people. And finally, uh, this card does not target. So you can summon from hand or graveyard, whichever one that matters to you. So it can't be like really DD crowed or called by the grave. But of course, when you do it during the opening play, it does matter because you're going to do the play that preserves the most amount of resources. So therefore, Call by the Grave or DD Crow, whatever that banishes one of your cards, uh, usually does have some level of impact, but you still have to resolve this card as much as possible. So if you have a valid target in your hand, you'll have to summon it. Now the area of misplay comes from the condition that you have to special summon something with a different type than the monsters you control. And to break down Gladiator Beast typing, you control Beast, you have Beast Warriors, you have Wing Beast, and you right now have Sea Serpents as well. Now the Beast Warrior is the biggest problem when it comes to comeback because you have so many Beast Warriors. And uh, to put that into context of what people are misplaying, now Gladiator Beast Tamer Editor is one of the best monsters in the deck. To some degree, people are calling it broken because it's basically an aggro pain that lets you special summon out Gladiator Beast Fusion Monster by ignoring their summoning condition. And then you can tag them back in and still get their full on effect available. Fair point. And one of the crazier thing about this card is it's not hard once per turn. So if you remove it from the field and you put it back onto the field, you get to summon another one out from your extra deck, which can lead to some pretty devastating things. You have Heraclinos, which can negate spells and traps as long as you can discard a card, and that's not once per turn. You have Gazeris, which can let you pop two cards. You have uh, Domitianus, which can negate monster effects and control the entire battle phase. So. There's a lot of really powerful monsters that you can just put two of them on board, you can get to control monster spells and traps right away. And that is pretty devastating. But the key thing here is you have to revive this card. And uh, if you start off with Heraclinos as your combo and you link off your editor, you can't use Comeback to revive it because Heraclinos is a beast warrior. If you're controlling in a Torex or you're controlling the Andal or you're controlling whatever beast warrior that you have on the field, you cannot use Gladiator Beast Comeback to revive your editor again and again. So that's your biggest limitation. And a lot of people seem to forget that. And even as a part of the opening play of Gladiator Beast, some people are like, well, I'm just going to normal summon and then play Comeback. You can't normal summon and then do a Comeback usually because if you summon out, say, an Andal and you have another beast warrior, you're kind of stuck. So you'll have to play the comeback first before you drop the Beast Warrior so that that way you'll be able to put out two monsters onto the field. So that is the first one to keep in mind and make sure that you check your opponent's typing properly. And under Zombie World, all your dudes are zombies in the graveyard and on the field, so you will not be able to use Gladiator Beast comeback unless you're summoning from your hand. And Gladiator Rejection, rejected! Now. For this particular card, keep in mind that your opponent cannot target your Gladiator Beast monster outside of the battle phase. So as long as they're outside of the battle phase, um, you're protected. And uh, so your opponent cannot imperm you, they can't use like Nightmare Unicorn on you, you're just 
you're safe. But this does not protect your Test Panther because that is not a Gladiator Beast monster. So that is still one of your choke points in your entire deck. But a lot of people kind of forget that. So I'm just reminding you guys. And the other effect is the summon effect. Again, if you summon out a Gladiator Beast monster from your main deck, you get to summon out another one from your main deck. Uh, as long as it's different type than the monsters you control in defense position. That is a limitation. Make sure you don't put it in attack position so you can't attack with it. It's not a, a bot, like a damage extender, but it does offer you additional body so you can go into like say Gazerus or something like that. And one more key point, this is not by the effect of a Gladiator Beast monster. The only monsters that offer up those effects are both the Gladiator Beast monsters themselves and the Test Panther, Test Tiger combo. Those are the only ones that give you like the summon as if they are Gladiator Beasts. Some people forget that. This is not one of those. Oh, and keep in mind, Test Panther can't search this card. This is a Gladiator card, not a Gladiator Beast. So TLDR, if your opponent summons a Gladiator Beast Tamer Editor from the graveyard using Comeback, and make sure that they don't control another Beast Warrior when they do so, especially when they start the combo with Heraclinos. That is usually no good from that point forward. That's why they go into Domitianus more often than going into Heraclinos. Okay, now we're looking into some of the summon-based effects, especially with those with the card text of immediately after this effect resolves, perform X summon. Okay, so we're looking into IP Massacre Reina. So according to her card text, during your opponent's main phase, you can. Quick effect. Immediately after this effect resolves, Link summon one monster using materials you control, including this card. You can only use this effect of IP Masquerina once per turn, and a Link monster that uses this card as a Link material cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effect. That's a really cool effect, and it makes Avermax really hard to kill. So can these types of summons be negated by, say, card effects like Solemn Judgment or Black Horn of Heaven or any of those counter trap horns? I guess to some degree, even Solemn Strike, if they're using like World Legacy Awakening, can you use those cards to negate the summon of the monster that comes out? And the answer to that is, well, it depends on where it's placed on the chain link. Okay, this is gonna sound a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but it does state that immediately after this effect resolves, so the resolution has completed, you perform the action. So it's not considered as the resolution of the particular card effect. It's kind of outside of that timing. So it would be considered as the last action. So if you are in chain link one, your last action would be the link summon of whatever that you bring out through IP Mascarena. So consider this to be the same for Formula Synchron. If you use Formula Synchron to synchro into something using its effect, since it's immediately after this effect resolves, yes, you can use Solemn Strike to negate the summon of the card, and you don't exactly have to negate the effect entirely, or you can negate it with Black Horn of Heaven because you special summon directly and it would Anything that says would special summon, you can definitely negate it with those cards as well. So that's the uh, limitation of this particular wording. However, since this is a quick effect, you can put it into chain link two. If you put it as chain link two, you would be like af immediately after this card effect resolves, you will perform the summon as in chain link two, then you go to chain link one. And since it's no longer the last thing that happened, no, you cannot use solemn strike to negate the summon anymore. You could use it to negate the effect as chain link three, but definitely not in the new chain for sure. And uh, you definitely cannot use Black Horn of Heaven to stop it. So this is might sound a little bit more complicated for you newer players, but it is no longer the last action that has happened. And time for the quick rundown of most frequently illegally summoned monsters in the current format. Looking at Sky Striker number one, we have Kagari via Shark Cannon. In a typical mirror match, Kagari is going to be summoned through the effect of Ray, and that's not considered as properly summoned because it was not Link summoned. And therefore, if your opponent chooses to Shark Cannon while you, they have three spells in the graveyard, they can only banish it because it was not properly summoned and therefore it needs to get banished rather than being summoned. I mean, you can convert the illegal play into a misplay. They thought that they would get the summon, they banish your card. Sure, it hurts a little, but at least they didn't get to retrieve a free engage out of their graveyard. Second one is Hita to Nightmare Phoenix to Avermax. Do you see the problem there? The problem is that the Nightmare Phoenix was from the graveyard. The condition, or rather the recipe, of Avermax requires two plus monsters summoned from the extra deck and since the nightmare phoenix was summoned from the graveyard through hita it does not count it doesn't count anymore anyways it doesn't say you use two link monsters sure you can go into uh ningirzu 
yeah, that requires two Link monsters or more to get into, but this one is not the case. This one requires monster summon from the extra deck, and that is very, very different. And uh, so, I've actually personally lost to someone doing that to me, and I lost a whole match because of it. It's like game three. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna go into this and go into Avermax and uh, yeah, use that to get rid of your monster by crashing into it. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? And then I lost, and I signed the paper. So that was a big loss on my part. That's why I'm remembering this one. Another one is BLS. Make sure that Black Luster Soldier is summoned properly, uh, so that it does require three materials to make. So. On, on top of that, if they're locked under any sort of like dark only condition, especially you guys playing rockets, you guys have auto router that gives you like quick seven. Um, make sure that if you use the effects of your rocket monsters, you're locked under dark extra deck monsters only. So you can't go into BLS. And if you want to go into BLS, you usually don't use IP Masquerina to do so because you need like more monsters just to get into it. So that's the limitation of BLS. And for Gladiator Beasts as well. This is kind of more frequent recently, but of course it's probably a smaller fraction because Glad Beasts aren't exactly the biggest meta deck. Uh, we have people summoning out monsters summoned by editor. Anything that's summoned by editor is ignoring summoning condition and therefore not properly summoned. And because it's not properly summoned, you cannot revive them. If you contact fuse them out and then put them into the graveyard, yes, they can be revived. but if you summon, say, a Gazeris out of uh, the uh, extra deck using the effect of Editor and somehow you just link it off, you will not be able to revive that Gazeris from your graveyard because it was not properly summoned. And that's actually a big deal because the first Gazeris pops too. If you link it off to attempting to revive it, that would be technically a second four pops, but that's not possible because... Again, it was not summoned out properly because it, the condition was ignored. You had to contact views to get that one out. And that is my complete breakdown for the current rulings that you guys should be aware of based off of summonings for Chaos Impact. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. I might choose a random comment down there to perhaps send them some GB stuff. Mm, who knows? And uh, I will check the comments down there and make sure you guys hit thumbs up, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell, and I'll we'll see you guys in the next one because right now it is almost 4 a.m.